Hey, Coach Saban, aren't you retired? What are you doing here? Hey, Coach Jay, you know, I'd just like to come and check out the local talent and check out the town around the U.S., and it's still fun for me. Even though I am retired from the game, I still want to see these guys play every year. All right, Coach, well, I got to ask. I know you're an expert scout, and we all know about the accolades and all the history behind what you've built. Got to tell me, who are you here to see? Well, Coach Jay, I got to say, it's somebody from your neck of the woods, and I've been hearing a lot about this kid, and you know me, I love running backs, so I got to check out DeJounte Savage. Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to the recruiting special here in season seven. And you just gotta look at DeJounte Savage out of Green Bay, Wisconsin, the number one running back in the nation. And it looks like he will be close to about 80 overall. He's got home run hitting speed, 89. You gotta expect that he's gonna be about 93, 94 speed when he does eventually go into his senior season eventually. But right now he's got good speed for a freshman. He is going to be amazing. He's got trucking, you see it's at B. His break tackle is at B, his elusiveness is at C. He's gonna be pretty good. He can also pass protect, which is very undervalued. He can also route run. So this guy is dynamic and his top schools are Florida State and also the White Tails. We are neck and neck, only about 600 points apart. And it looks like it's gonna be a two school race as we will try to land the number one running back in the nation and the number 23 player overall. Now let's just talk about our pipelines. So we have been kind of unsuccessful with getting five pipelines. We've only been able to keep about three or four at a time. We do have four right now with Minnesota possibly ending, but I do have a couple of targets to keep them around. And I do plan on adding some more prospects at the end of the year. Now I do have recruiting rules. Remember, I do not add prospects to the board uh, before week 10. After week 10, I can add uh, prospects that I want and I add one from each pipeline so I can add that but right now this is what our recruiting map looks like and really I do want to keep recruiting in Michigan Indiana and Illinois those three states have really given me really good recruits especially in non-custom recruits so I will continue to uh, recruit in those states and after this season I will expand and start recruiting outside of the Midwest and I don't know what region, but I will open up one other region. So we'll have to see what region that will be. So let's check out these recruits here in season seven. And this will be the best recruiting class, obviously. Every year we get better. But we're checking out a guy that is also a U.S. Army All-American, A.J. Blue Watkins. This guy is a guy that can fly around the field. He is a ball hawk. I mean, an elite ball hawk. And he is a two-time All-State safety. This guy is amazing from St. Louis. And he was the county player of the year as well in his junior season. Still finishing up his senior season, but he's on his way to a third straight All-State honor. This guy would be special to add to our defense. So we'll have to see what he's thinking. 
Now, another guy that was here at the All-American game, Jamari Dunn. He is the number one ranked tackle in the nation, and we are on his list of top schools, and we would just thrive with a All-American tackle. We've never had an All-American lineman, so it would be amazing to have him on the squad. So if you have been following my channel back in the Coastal Carolina series, back in the original Coach J, this is actually Coach J's kid, two Coach J's. You remember safety Alan King. He was only about 5'7", but here is his son, Delroy King. Now, this guy is a dynamic weapon on offense. It is kind of the opposite of his dad. His dad was a safety, but Delroy King is a offensive weapon. Now, you can use him everywhere on the field. Now, you can use him in the slot, on the outside. He can actually go up and get it. He is 5'11", a little bit taller than his dad was. And quite honestly, this guy is a special athlete. He's got elite quickness, elite athleticism. And you know what? He does have an issue with dropping passes, but it's few and far in between. I think this guy is going to be special at the collegiate level. Definitely just a weapon you can use anywhere on offense. Like I said, line him up in the backfield as well. Maybe let him run a little bit of option with him. And he, you know what? He has great release off the line. And you know, guys can't really push him off. I do kind of compare him to Deshaun Jackson because he is slight of frame, but I think he is a lot stronger than what he looks. Now, I think that, you know, he does need to add a little bit of weight. That's not to say that, but I think he will translate to the college level pretty well. So, remember back in season two, we started going to the breast cancer awareness football camp. And this is where we met a lot of our talent on our team, even still on our roster. Victor Dimitrankos to add one, and then Bam Cameron to add a second. Those two are guys that we found at this camp. Now, since other teams are starting to notice how good we've been, we're starting to now get higher prospects at this camp. Now, you can see Alabama scouting here, Auburn scouting here. A lot of the SEC schools are now starting to come to this camp in Chicago. So that's where we see a lot of local talent now. We're looking at some top talent now, and we're looking at Willis at cornerback. This guy is a man cover cornerback, and he is elite. I mean elite in press coverage. I love that because we have not been able to play a lot of man here in this dynasty, but I think with Barry Willis, he will definitely make a difference. Now, Aurelio Villain is a top defensive end, number seven in the nation out of Fargo, North Dakota. He's got elite size, 6'5", 255. He can rush the passer. He can stuff the run. He's just an amazing player all around. Now, because of how elite he is, I'm not sure our chances on him, but I'm gonna at least try because we do need to add all the talent we can get. Now, I decide to triple down on uh, special teams, guys. Three kickers and one punter. But this guy, Alice Kagan, we discovered at the Breast Cancer Awareness Camp, he can kick like no other. We have not received any type of top prospect as a kicker here in this dynasty. And I think that Alice Kagan will finally be the guy that will put us over the top. Now, it's not a sexy recruit here to get a kicker, but we do need to add some type of help to this offense. And I think hitting long field goals will definitely go a long way. Now, let's talk about the guy I think has the highest ceiling, Deshaun Harrington, an underrated defensive end. I want to just show you a couple of clips on what type of player he is. Take a look at this play, a run to the left play. And look at this. He kind of has outside contained, but he has a, actually a cornerback, Ramsor, on the outside. But look at him. He gets inside, outside leverage. He pushes his lineman. He kind of turns him. And not only did he turn him, he opened up a doorway for his linebacker to come and make the play. Now, here's another one. Take a look at the penetration. His He has to get blocked by the pulling guard, but take a look at how quick he is to the ball. He gets right to the running back in the backfield. I mean, that is just elite level athleticism to kind of just use his leverage as a smaller defensive end and get to the running back. That is amazing. Now, the next guy we're looking at. You remember that last name, Ying? Yeah, we're talking about Anthony Ying's little brother. His name is Edward Ying. He's elite. He's in Northwood, Northview, Michigan, the number six ranked quarterback in the nation. Let's just check him out.
let's just look at the recruiting board now and these are our rankings here we did kind of rank them as far as what we would need as far as needs and also talent wise who are the best players that would fit nicely with our current roster now aj watkins is going to be my number one rated recruit and it's mainly because he is a pure safety and Ali Myers has been playing free safety and he's been doing pretty good but we're locked in at third place probably going to be locked out so these points could be reallocated to somebody else now let's talk about Edward Ying now I'm hoping that I can possibly make a move here and he is looking at Texas right now we need to schedule a visit so let's just schedule that right now let's schedule it earlier so that we get more points before we get to that Texas uh, visit at week 13. So I'm actually going to visit him probably at week 10. And the reason why is because I know Pittsburgh probably doesn't have the greatest defense. So if I can get as many quarterback points with him as possible, that would definitely help. Now, Barry, Barry Willis is a really good cornerback, good man, cover corner, 85 man, 5'9", 186. A lot like Elgin Lloyd, if you remember him, from Carroll, Iowa, the number 20 ranked cornerback in the nation. He is a three-star prospect only, so we will have probably a good signing in him. It looks like he is coming our way. Now, Delroy King is an offensive weapon that we would be able to use everywhere at running back, at receiver. He is really quick. I think that acceleration at B right now is going to go up to an A. Very agile, very elusive. He's going to be a dynamic guy for us. But Minnesota is on his uh, radar right now. He is 78% locked, so we do need to stay close within range. And Minnesota, or Wisconsin isn't too far behind with Marquette trying to get him but did fail eventually. Now, Damari Dunn is a tackle, and we do need offensive linemen for the future. He would likely be a redshirt candidate. He is actually the number one tackle in the nation. He's a five-star prospect. We are a 1,000 points by, behind Washington right now, and it looks like we're projected to get cut off as well. Now, DeJounte Savage, we did highlight that he is a dynamic running back. He can do it all, and he is. we are in second place for him. He is from Green Bay, so that will definitely help. Now, Aurelio Villain is a really good defensive end, and honestly, maybe even the best player on this board right now. He is 80 finesse moves, 75 power move, 80 block shed. I think he could be dynamic and could eventually take over for Bobby Mathis. He would be a really good candidate for a red shirt because if Bobby Mathis stays for another year he will be ready at about 80 low 80s overall and these guys are all due for visits so we will schedule their visits now Ja'Kai Betts I do not want him to go to Wisconsin he is a dynamic safety another one and like I said I like these tackling safeties he's really good tackling 79 83 pursuit doesn't have the speed but he is a box safety he does have some hit power on him as well I think that C will go up we'll have to see now, Cameron St. Clair is from Quebec, Canada. He is on his way to the White Tails. It looks like we are in the lead. Nobody's really going after him. I think he's going to be a really good red shirt candidate because we do need to wait a little bit. But he is a slot cornerback because he can tackle 81. I'm going to send him on a lot of blitzes. I'm excited for what he can bring. He also has 90 press. Now, Robert Rogers is a really good middle linebacker out of Perry Heights, Ohio. And, you know, we're not too bad right now. We're, we're projected to get locked out. But I, quite honestly, I'm not really worried about Kentucky and Cincinnati as far as recruiting. I think we can catch them. If we get a visit, we can definitely catch them, get a, about 1,000 points in a visit. We'll see. Jemai, Damon Trek is definitely a defensive tackle I'm looking to get. The problem is 1,700 points behind, behind. I don't see us getting him at all. Iowa looks like they're going full steam ahead with him. Another offensive lineman that we might miss out on, Georgia Roof, three-star prospect out of Bloomington, Indiana, 6'9", 315. That's why he's highly regarded. It looks like he's headed to Louisiana Monroe. That is an interesting commit there. So Louisiana Monroe looking to make moves and get this big defensive or uh, offensive guard. Now let's talk about a guy who I think is very, very underrated, Deshaun Harrington out of Detroit, Michigan. He is really good he has great finesse moves he has great technique in that department i do think he'll need a year of redshirting just to 
kind of you know shore up his block shedding it's at a d right now and i don't think it's going to improve much right now he's 5'11 undersized with 256 which, which makes sense with his block shedding he's definitely going to have to use his quickness and technique to get off of blocks now let's talk about a future at tight end terry owens out of green bay wisconsin he is probably not headed to our direction though South Carolina has fully committed to him. Iowa is fully committed, and so has Miss Mississippi State. It doesn't look like we're in the driver's seat at all, so it, we're probably going to miss out on him. So this year, I made the most custom recruits I've ever made. I made 20 exactly. I usually don't try to do that because it's very hard to get all of those guys, but this year, I did make the full 20. Now, I doubled down on special teams because... Honestly, we have had terrible luck in recruiting kickers and punters. We have not had at all a top 10 kicker or punter recruit at all. So we are going to go after Alex Kagan. Now, he is a power leg type of a kicker. Now, let's see what he is uh, headed as far as his top school. So we are a thousand points ahead and I kind of like him along with Jonah Arnold, but it looks like Jonah Arnold is going to be headed to Michigan State. He is an all-around kind of punter, 82 kick power with 76 accuracy, but it looks like Michigan State is going in on him. But we did kind of have another kicker in mind, Eric Green, but it does not look like he is going to be close to coming to us. Wisconsin looks like is on his radar. Now, we do have an athlete this year, Brad Christian. So I am not sure how I made an athlete, but I did. I was able to do it. I guess I made him well-rounded. I'm not really sure. I accidentally uh, also unlocked all of his ratings. I like to only unlock 50%, but it looks like he is going to kind of be, I don't know. It, it looks like maybe a defensive back and because his tackling's pretty low, but also maybe a running back as well because he's his trucking's at 85, but also he can throw the ball with 81 throw power and 79 throw accuracy interesting guy right here he can play everywhere he is 6'1 224 and from minnesota we will definitely need a minnesota recruit to keep them as our pipeline but we are in second place behind iowa state now lamar austin this is a non-custom recruit here he is an athlete a four-star athlete we are in second place for him and look who's there it's michigan and jim harbaugh is going to be looking to add to that talent on his roster this guy looks like a running back to be honest he has a little bit of defensive skill but it doesn't look like a lot so it looks like more of a running back i'm not really sure but he is on our board now to round down our board we have cornelius smith who is not coming cedric myrick is another minnesota recruit outside linebacker i'm gonna move him up because i do need some minnesota recruits to keep them as a pipeline he definitely will get registered if he does come he is nothing special to be honest only 60 overall jared robinson i did not unlock any attributes for him but we are competing with marquette i want to keep these recruits away from marquette johnny rivero another offensive lineman a center and it looks like we are 300 points behind. I don't have anything uh, scouted on him. And then our last guy on our board is Dale Brown, a decent cornerback out of Michigan, six foot 193. But we are not going to be getting him. It looks like FAU is his top school. So that will do it here in the recruiting special. Let's just take a look at the top about 50 or so recruits. Marquette does have the number two athlete looking to go to their school competing with Southern Miss out of all schools and looking at him he looks like an amazing player he's definitely going to be dynamic it looks like he's going to be a running back as well he's a returner looks like as well break tackles pretty good elusiveness is good and he runs a 4 3 6 40 he is going to be amazing and it looks like he will be at least headed to Marquette in the short term we'll have to see if he does stick that route but I'm just looking at the top recruits here. At least Marquette and Wisconsin don't have any of the other top 20 guys. But it does look like Alabama's here, LSU, a lot of uh, SEC football guys. And you can just see Texas Tech, UConn's even here with these top recruits. Marquette, there's Marquette with uh, Navy. It looks like they are headed with another five-star athlete. And let's just look at him. He looks elusive and he looks like another running back maybe, but he does have uh b speed so i know i don't know if he's as fast he might be maybe a receiver he's got c route running maybe not i guess he looks like more of a running back with him 
But that is going to do it here in this episode. Let me know what you guys think of this recruiting class. I definitely like these guys a lot. And it's definitely kind of it's going to be kind of different because we have some five star prospects now on our board and really incorporating them into our, our rotation on our roster currently is going to be interesting. So I'm looking forward to that. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. We're hopping right back into Big Ten play. So stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I've been working hard for a minute. The ones who don't deserve it seem to be the ones that get it. The ones who speak the truth never get the recognition. But the ones that act foolish seem to get all the attention. It don't matter though. Yeah. And it don't even matter though. Nope.